Well, hello there, St. Luke's. Uh, great to be back with you for this midweek message. Um, we are uh, in the full run of summer here, and it's been a great joy uh, to um, see some people coming through. You know, we have sort of a handful of visitors, uh, which is to be expected um, each and every Sunday now um, on their sort of uh, annual summer vacations. And so some of them are meeting for the first time, and they say, oh, we come every summer, and some of them uh, um, it's the first time they've come through, and so it's been um, it's been exciting and encouraging. In fact, it's always encouraging that people um, on vacation don't uh, forsake uh, the Lord's day, and so we're grateful to see that. And I'm always um, encouraged as I uh, in, in the you know new family pops up at the eight o'clock uh, here and there, or the, even the ten, and um, and it brings a smile to my face. So this is an exciting time uh, for us here. There's um, also I'm experiencing for the first time, as our parish administrator, Jessica Maple, said, uh, the life of a Hilton Head um, Islander in that my family and my brother and uh, sister and brother-in-law have been in town all week. And so I um, am starting to see firsthand what people do when they're on vacation here uh, on the island and why it's such a wonderful and majestic place. Uh, uh, not that we didn't think it was before, but um, but we're getting to see it through entirely different eyes, and so praise God! It's been it's been a wonderful time, and it's and like I said in the sermon on Sunday, it's hard to believe it's almost been a year, um, but there we have it. It has almost been a year uh, that we've been here, and why? And the time has flown, as we say, uh, sort of. Uh, but the, uh, we have a lot to look forward to. So stay tuned over the next couple of weeks and months uh, as we uh, well the next couple of weeks as we. Um, we're having a staff planning retreat next week to get things uh, finalized for the fall. We've got a number of offerings uh, that we are going to be sharing with you. And so it's, it promises to be um, just another exciting fall, an exciting, um, but first, but first the summer. And so, um, so uh, you know, this is where we are. Okay, well, there's just really, um, you know, the normal announcements that we talked about uh, on Sunday that are in the leaflet. There hasn't been any real changes. We're still looking for people to join our summer praise choir. So if that's of interest to you, please, um, please uh, contact the office and, and be praying. Uh, you know who you are out there. If you can, in fact, sing, if you enjoy singing, consider um, offering your talents um, to the service of the Lord here in this in this capacity, because we have a wonderful choir. Um, you know, Nina and Dallas do a great job uh, leading and directing the music, but we need more voices. We need more, um, you know, people in the choir. And so if that's you, I want you to pray about it um, and ask the Lord if this is how he would like you to um, to give back your talents that he has blessed you with uh, in service of the church, because that's um, that's what we need. Um, not everyone has been gifted uh, with the same things. And um, but some people can sing. Some people can sing loud and, and joyfully, and and um, and it would be a great offering for us. And so consider that um, over the next couple of weeks. And it may begin with a trial run in the praise choir, uh, which is being offered here, um, robes free. That's very important during the summer. It can some people get quite hot? It, it seems, although we do our best with the with the air conditioner. So there we go. Um, but uh, but the summer praise choir might be. Um, the, just sort of a time for you to dip your toe um, or dip your, your, your voice into, into our choir and get a sense of what you may be getting into. So um, as you can tell, uh, we have a lot of grace and latitude for people who can't make it every single week for all sorts of reasons. And so um, we are trying to make it as um, accessible as possible. And yet um, many voices make lo make um, for a, a more joyful and resounding noise to the Lord. And so, um, yes, pray about that and consider that uh, and maybe uh, take part in our summer praise choir um, during the month of August. Uh, beginning, excuse me, begins June 27th, um, July 11th and 25th are on the Tuesday rehearsals, excuse me. Um, uh, this is when it begins. But contact the office and get in touch with Dallas, either Dallas or Nina, if you're interested. And so um, I hope that some of you will at least uh, consider this and, uh, and lay it before the Lord and see if he uh, deepens that, um, that desire uh, for you. Okay, well, this Sunday, uh, we have been asked by the chairman of GAFCON, the Global Anglican Fellowship Conference. Um, as some of you know, many of you know, Laza and I were part of our diocesan delegation to this conference in Kigali, Rwanda, just a couple of months ago now. Um, and so we have been asked by the now chairman, um, the Bishop Ben, ben Kwashi, who is the GAFCON general secretary, 
um, to observe this Sunday in, a, in some capacity, uh, this June 25th, is GAFCON Sunday. And so we, um, we are, are going to have fairly normal, don't worry, it's not entirely different service, but we are going to spend the Rector's Forum in particular looking at what's called the Jerusalem Declaration, which if you don't know what that is, you can find it now on our website under What We Believe. But suffice it to say, the Jerusalem Declaration was a product of the very first GAFCON conference some 15 years ago. And it was the sort of charter document for the Anglican Church in North America, um, among others, but this ours in particular. It's contained in our prayer book as part of the foundational documents. And it is something that, um, as, a, as, a, as a priest, as a minister in this church, I am, um, I am uh, sworn to, to uphold and, and adhere to. Uh, and so it's very important. It's, very, it's not the Bible, obviously, but it's a, very, it's a list of very scriptural principles um, that uh, have shaped and are continuing, more importantly, uh, or as importantly, continuing to shape our Anglican Church. So uh, I'm going to tell you more all about that on Sunday, but please um, get ready. If you'd like to read it beforehand, that would be great. But suffice, again, it, it's, it's, it's a, um, uh, the importance of this document to the identity of the Anglican Church in North America, which we are a uh, member is cannot be over, overstated, right? Cannot be overstated. That's right. Um, and so, um, so check it out. Okay, but I'm going to read you here before we go um, the letter, the email that we received from uh, Ben Kwashi, Archbishop Ben Kwashi, about this. It says this: This Sunday, June 25th, is Gafcon Sunday. As you reflect on why Gafcon was necessary, join with sisters and brothers around the world in taking a lead from the Kigali commitment and prepare for a future in an Anglican communion that is faithful to God's call on us to take his gospel to the world. GAFCON Sunday commemorates the 15th anniversary of the first gathering of faithful global Anglicans in Jerusalem in 2008. It was there that the historic Jerusalem statement and declaration was given as a gift from God to those gathered. The Jerusalem Declaration has become the statement which faithful Anglicans affirm as they hold to the unchanging truth in a changing world. This Sunday, please take the opportunity, both personally and corporately in churches, to recommit to the historic truths of the Bible as set out in the Jerusalem Declaration. And he continues, It is now two months since GAFCON concluded in Rwanda. The Kigali commitment calls on faithful Anglicans to hold firm to God's good word, recognizing it as the rule of our lives as disciples of Jesus and as the final authority in the church. It carries God's own authority. It is its own interpreter, and it does not need to be supplemented, nor can it ever be overturned by human wisdom. The Kigali commitment calls for Orthodox Anglican groupings to work together towards a resetting of the Anglican communion. The commitment asks churches and dioceses to join together in seven gospel priorities for reaching out into our lost world. There is much to do, and your support is greatly needed, says uh, Archbishop Ben Kwashi. So we'll talk more about this on Sunday, but um, it was an incredibly exciting thing to be a part of, just as it is remains an exciting thing to be a part of this global Anglican movement, um, of which we are the North American branch, or we are the province. And I am um, not unaware of the challenges that we face as a church, but I'm certainly um, confident that the Lord, uh, who has begun this great work, will not leave us nor forsake us. And so we will continue to be both at St. Luke's and then as part of the broader Anglican Diocese of South Carolina, um, a uh, significant force or as, as we, we, will, we will exert and we will um, hopefully um, uh, hold, the, we exert the force and hold the responsibility that the Lord has given us to, um, to, to teach, to equip, to comfort, to care for, and to finally bring um, his saving embrace uh, to as many people as he calls uh, uh, to uh, us here at St. Luke's. And so anyway, I can say more about it, uh, but not here on this midweek message. So come on Sunday or check out uh, the recording when we put it up and you'll learn a little bit more, a lot more perhaps, about um, this, uh, this important document that has, uh, has and is continuing to shape our lives here as Anglicans at St. Luke's. Okay, well, until then, um, take care and God bless.